I think for me it was, okay, maybe it didn't work out necessarily in my case, but I think just in this day and age, communication is such a big part of relationships yeah. and especially with technology and people kind of not really focusing on one another. I wanted it to be that kind of, for people to be able to find hope and actually go, you know, let, let me try and have a conversation with my partner and yeah. see what we want because we actually might be on the same page and we don't really realize it. Um, but yeah, it definitely come from my own, own experience. Hi everyone, welcome back to We Plug Good Music TV. My name is Ayo and you're tuning into our brand new series titled Behind the Music, where we will be speaking with some of our favorite new artists and they'll be taking us behind the scenes to their latest releases. Today, we're speaking with UK R&B singer and songwriter Amethyst and we'll be talking about her new single, Get Comfortable, and her new EP of the same title as well. So here we go. Amethyst, welcome to the show. Hello. How's it going? Good, thank you. Cool. So before we jump in to the music, I'd like to do a quick check in with our guests, with the artists that come on here. Just, you know, how's the year been so far? How's the week been so far even? Yeah, it's been good. Very good. Obviously, a lot's happened in the last couple of weeks of the EP coming out so yeah I feel like kind of just riding on that high still and yeah just feeling very content loving the weather as well yeah. so I can't really complain it's been good so far <laughs> <laughs> all good all good um so before we jump into talking about Get Comfortable and the EP as well for the people that may watch this that don't know you yet um can you give us a bit of a backstory as to who Amethyst is and how we got to where we are now. Yeah, so I am Amethyst. I'm an R&B soul artist. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been singing since I was like three and always played uh, instruments when I was like four or five years old. Um, but I only actually started properly writing music when I was like 17, 18. So it's been a long journey. I always knew I wanted to do music, yeah. um, but yeah, I kind of didn't even start singing lessons since I was like 16. Um, but yeah, I went to uni to study music because then I was like, right, this is what I want to do. I want to learn more about it. I want to kind of better my songwriting. I think even though I knew how to like play instruments, I still wasn't really focusing on my own music. Um, and yeah, I went to uni. I met one of my friends who I still write with now. Um, and yeah, I kind of started to learn a bit more about who I wanted to be as an artist, but still was kind of learning and it's only been in the past year or so because um, I went and did a master's in songwriting and production because I wanted to build okay. on even more like I wanted to be able to produce things myself as yeah. well I think a lot of the time like I'll be in the studio and working with other producers which is great but I still wanted to work on like what is me and how can I do this myself yeah. Um, and yeah and then that year was amazing and I met some other great people that I write with and some of the songs on the EP I wrote with them um, and yeah, and finally got to a point where I was like, this is me. Yeah. I want to release music. I think the time is now. And awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, well, you know, um, a lot of artists don't really go down the route of academia, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, to, you know, to learn their craft. Yeah. And so um, why did you choose to go down that route? I think for me, I wanted to, well, I think I wanted to go to learn more about performing and I had like a basic kind of theory understanding from what I'd learned, but I just thought, okay, well maybe let me go and be involved with other musicians. Cause I was doing everything at home by myself and just, you know, playing guitar and piano, <laughs> but I wasn't really involved with like any other, anybody else that played okay, music. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of have that experience to network and you know eventually meet people I could write music with or perform music with and have that experience and I definitely it, for a networking experience I think it's great okay. in terms of like what I learned from it I wouldn't say it was the most amazing thing like yeah. I can I wouldn't say if you want to do music you need to go to uni like yeah. you don't I, I think doing it myself now I've been like okay I could have just done a lot of it you can learn so much from like YouTube yeah. and you know um, doing it yourself really but yeah, for me, it was just, I wanted to go somewhere and see what I could learn and develop my skills, especially because like the course I did at uni was vocal performance. Yeah, yeah. 
even though I'd had like singing lessons, I still wanted to kind of better my craft and see what I could learn. And it, like, it, it was great. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think everyone has to go down that route if you want to do music. It's not, you don't have to do it. Cool, cool. So um, we are definitely going to jump into talking about get comfortable but less less maybe pan out a bit and uh, so you just said that you have just put out an ep which is titled after get comfortable as well so um what is this new ep all about so it basically is centered around love i i find that a really interesting topic and obviously like I, it's something i've experienced myself and i know that pretty much everyone will have gone through some feelings of love or something um and yeah i just thought it was super interesting and i wanted to talk about it from like all the angles of love so whether that be like falling in love with someone for the first time um heartbreak being cheated on that kind of feeling of loneliness like when will i find that person yeah, eventually yeah. and then the kind of getting over the stage where you're actually happy being by yourself and yeah so I wanted to just kind of I know it's only four tracks so it's very hard to kind of compress that into one but yeah. they weren't all written with the idea that they'd be on the same um, project okay. it was kind of just one song happened and then the other song was like oh okay this is interesting they're all now just talking about different perspectives of love um, and it kind of happened to work out well that they actually it was like a journey basically yeah. of like you know, not hopefully how every relationship goes, but like <laughs> in general, yeah. what like some people will go through, I don't know, something in Get Comfortable, or someone might go through something on Up All Night. Yeah. So yeah, just something that I find interesting yeah. to talk about. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right, so talking about Get Comfortable, the track, you have called it your favorite track on the EP. And um, you know, it's quite, different to the previous tracks that you put out as well. Um, so in your own words, uh, could you tell us what this track is all about? So um, it's basically about a couple that are kind of falling out of love with one another. They're kind of on the edge of breaking up and they've lost the flame, like the connection between them really. And they basically are sitting down to have that conversation about kind of ending it, breaking yeah. up. And as they start talking, they actually realize that they did want the same thing, but they've just been really bad at communicating it yeah. to one another. Um, and yeah, as the song goes on, they kind of realize they are still in love with one another and they start to reconnect and they just realize that actually, yeah, we just need to communicate things better and that they are meant to be together. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, well, okay. So, um, what? in your life or not uh, kind of inspired you to write the song and kind of tackle this particular subject? Yeah, so I, it's something I've experienced myself and um, sadly not the part where like we ended up happily back together, <laughs> but, but there were conversations like that that happened through our relationship. Um, and. I think for me it was, okay, maybe it didn't work out necessarily in my case, but I think just in this day and age, communication is such a big part of relationships yeah. and especially with technology and people kind of not really focusing on one another. I wanted it to be that kind of, for people to be able to find hope and actually go, you know, let, let me try and have a conversation with my partner and yeah. see what we want because we actually might be on the same page and we don't really realize it. Um, but yeah, it definitely come from my own own experience of kind of feeling like the flame had gone yeah. and wanting that to come back and like how can you recreate that feeling that like the honeymoon stage when yeah. you're first together. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of wanted it to be almost like a song where people can listen and be like, oh, you know, even though I might be with my partner for five years or ten years, like we do still want the same things and we can sit down and have that conversation yeah. and hopefully it's a song that helps people kind of reconnect and find that flame again. Okay, so like, if we, okay, if we or if you look back um, to your own relationship, right, um, do you hope or wish that you had that conversation? Is that what, perhaps, you know, sparked that um, desire or that, or that thought of being able to reconnect. 
yeah, I think it is definitely something that I wish uh, we had. I think it was, we had had conversations like this, yeah. I think. And obviously during the relationship, part it did work partly because then, you know, we think all oh, things aren't right. And then we'd actually have a conversation, be able to communicate and, you know, we'd stay together and like, it, it did it did work for a little while longer. Um, and I think just in my personal case, it just was one of these things where it just wasn't meant to be. I think you can try and have that conversation so many times and sometimes it's just not meant to be. Um, but yeah, I had experienced it like very briefly, like throughout our relationship. And we had, you know, almost felt, oh, maybe we shouldn't be together. And then had a conversation and we did stay together and it, that was great. And you do kind of reignite that flame. And yeah, like I say, sometimes it just isn't always meant to be, but, um, for some people, I think it can it can work out, and they're just you know struggling to have that conversation with one another, really. For sure, for sure. So um, I'm gonna do a quick compare and contrast, and we'll like kind of hopefully link back to the EP as well. So on get comfortable, the focus is more on reconnecting, fixing a broken relationship, and then on a song like can't let go you talk about being confident in what you bring to a partner or you know what you bring to to the table in a relationship um so like how do these two songs and you know how how do how do the songs on the ep link and you know and you know how do they link and live with each other on this project yeah so i think like with Can't Let Go, that was a song that I'd written. Um, I was actually still with my ex at the time, but then kind of when it came to like finishing it, that's when we'd um, broken up. And it was, it was almost that feeling like when you start to move on from someone, yeah. you kind of realize, you know, I deserve a lot and like I should feel confident in myself yeah. and I, you know, I'm worthy of love in a certain way and I shouldn't have to settle for anything less. And like, I think for me, that was that part of love where you do start to move on and you realize actually I should, you know, I'm worthy of what yeah. I deserve and I don't have to kind of not just wait around, but like, like I say, settle. And I think that's the thing with the songs is that, like you say, you've got Can't Let Go, which is more of like a confident song. I wanted people to be able to listen to it and feel confident, not like cocky, but, you know, be able to hold their head yeah. high and like, feel like, yeah, I'm sexy or I deserve this or whatever. Um, and then get comfortable might be for someone that's already in a relationship. And his, like I say, is going through that. We've been together for a long time kind of situation. And then you have Up All Night, which is about cheating and the manipulation side of a relationship. And then when what I know is the kind of, when you might first break up with someone or just being single for a long time and not knowing like what is to come and who I'll meet next. So. Yeah, I, I think they're all very like different parts of relationships or love, which I find really interesting because I could have chosen maybe to just do a whole EP about heartbreak and yeah. like sadness and that one topic, which, you know, people do all the time. And I think yeah. that that's great. And you can resonate with that a lot, but I quite like the idea that each song had a different part of, like a different stage of love and relationships and they all, linked to each other in a certain way and you could listen to them like one after another and yeah. like get the story of where they're going yeah yeah um so yeah it's kind of all the different cool. different parts yeah <laughs> so okay um not to um not to play not to play devil's advocate here but all right so say you are at a fork in the road in with your partner and um so which one are you uh, or which one would you subconsciously lean into can't let go which is you know more of you know i know i know who i am i know what i bring i know what i deserve you know um and you know I can stand tall and demand it yeah. or get comfortable 
let's talk, let's try to mend things, let's try to reconnect. Naturally, where where do you fall on that? Or or can those two things live side by side? Yeah, I mean, oh, it's difficult. I think personally, I would be more of the get comfortable. Like I'm more of a, a talker. I would want to try and communicate, talk the situation out, see like what's going wrong or how we can solve it, you know, talking about any problems we might have. That would probably be like the go-to for me if I was, you know, at that place where we didn't know where we were. Yeah. But I think Can't Let Go, yeah, could equally live side by side with that. But for me, that's more of a track where it's like, you know, that kind of bad girl energy where you, you've broken up with that person or, you're single or whatever, you don't even have to have been in a relationship, but to kind of feel that confidence that whenever you are with someone, you can feel confident about it and confident in your body and how you present yourself, whatever. So I feel like, yeah, you could see them side by side, um, but then I, I would say can't let go. It's made, if you were feeling that way when it's like a fork in the road, yeah. I'd feel a bit like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe then you guys shouldn't be together. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would, for me, get comfortable would be like probably the go-to yeah. in that situation. Okay. And then like, can't let go is maybe after or when yeah. you're single or whatever, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, cool. Um, so you have already touched on how the EP kind of chronicles your own experiences of love, um, um, you know, and you know, you know how there are different parts of love, or di or different parts of a relationship through the EP. Um, but like, um, so how how does one, or how do you channel all of those feelings and all of those experiences into the music, into your songwriting? Yeah, I think it's it's interesting because when I wrote each song, I feel like I was pretty much almost exactly at that place at that time. Yeah. I think maybe the only one would have been Get Comfortable because that was actually written after I wasn't with my ex anymore. So, but I, it was still something I could talk about because I wish we'd had that kind of conversation when we were together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, we, yeah, we've Can't Let Go. It was shortly after, so I was like, you know, in that, not like revenge, but you're just in that mood where like, yeah, I don't care about you, I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> like, I, I wanna be strong, I wanna feel good about myself, like onto the next one kind of energy and yeah. like, and then uh, when will I know was more of that, like, actually I'm now thinking about it and thinking about myself and kind of looking back on that relationship and sad about okay we're not together anymore but actually just realizing when will you you'll be so in love with somebody and then you're not with them anymore yeah. and when will the time come when i actually meet somebody who's going to be right for me um yeah and going like kind of diving into that grief i guess a bit more yeah. um and then up all night was more like, even though I hadn't been through the experiences that I talk about in that song, it was still that same feeling and that anger of like wanting that person to change and they don't, which I could still relate to. Yeah. And putting that energy into that song and, you know, you can almost hear more of like the, I guess, aggression like yeah, yeah. in my voice and that, and then get comfortable with more intimate and more you know, soulful and a different, like smoother sound to my voice, I guess. So like, I felt with each track, it was just like, like written at the perfect time almost. Yeah, yeah. And I could properly put all my emotion into it because I was going through all of those feelings yeah. like at the time of writing it and recording it. Um, so yeah. So. Cool. Um, all right. So let's talk about how these songs actually came together so like you know um what is your creative process like well with this particular project and, and these particular songs so um two of the tracks um can't let go and up all night were actually written 
uh, when I, uh, well, when I was doing my masters, I met um, my friend Martina, also known as Strama. That's her producer artist name. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just kind of had like a really good, like, quick bond. We realised we had the same interests and the same things. And I had um, written a few like demos and stuff just myself, like over lockdown as well. And yeah, so those tracks were written with her and. The process behind that was more that I would kind of come up with a really, really rough demo, like literally it would be like a loop vocal idea with the like hook in the verse, um, maybe like a bit of bass and a drum beat. Yeah. And then I would send that to her and be like, okay, this is the vibe I'm going for. Like, here's the reference for this. Yeah. And then she would add to that. So she would like, obviously she had more sound so she could, you know, create a better, like sound sonically of the track and then she would add her own effects and then send that back to me and then we'd get in the studio and I'd properly record the vocals yeah. and we'd do that together. So it was li that was so nice because it was literally just me and her on those tracks, like yeah. two girls just working on this. Um, and yeah, she's, she's an incredible producer and she like gets exactly what I'm thinking and like it's so easy to work with her. Um, so yeah, that was like a really quick process. With Get Comfortable When Will I Know, I'd written those with my friend Ted, who I went to uni with. Yeah. And we've had those songs for like three years, maybe three, four years. Um, so it was a lot of a longer process because I we had so many versions of them as well. Yeah. So like, When Will I Know was going to be like a ballad originally. Okay. Um, and Get Comfortable was part of another track. And then we kind of split the two up and wrote two oh. songs from it. Um, so yeah, that process we normally he'll just send me some chords, like a progression, and I'll come up with a vocal melody and some lyrics, and then we'll sit back down at the piano and try and just get like a rough structure. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, again, like be on Logic. So get comfortable, we just did over Zoom. Like we'll oh, just, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Cause it was during lockdown, Fair like when we were finishing yeah, it, yeah. 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 So, and he'll like input things. So like, I'll be like, okay, I want the bass to sound like this. I want the trumpet to sound like this, whatever and he'll input that onto Logic. And then, yeah, we'll have a really rough demo. And then we go into the studio with um, my friends, Jordan and Max. And yeah, we'll properly get, you know, like real guitar, real bass on it um, and re-record the vocals, obviously. And then, yeah, so that that process, like I love working with Ted because it's more live instruments. Oh, yeah. Like that's a big thing for me. I like mixing the two together. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a longer process, but in the end, it's so worth it because and, like we know each other so well. Yeah, yeah. So it, I just want to make sure like the songs come out as perfect as possible and they're going in the direction that like I want them to go. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. So like um, for future music, uh, you know, are these the two people that you are going to be working with mostly or, you know, are you into other, further collaborations, you know? Yeah, so I definitely want to work with as many people, producers, writers as possible, just because even though I feel like, okay, I know kind of what I want to do, yeah. this is like my first project. So I feel like there's still so much room to grow and I want to still work on like, what sounds do I like? And, you know, I, there's other producers that I love and I love their sound. And even, okay, maybe if I don't release it, just being able to be in that room and yeah. write and keep, you know, the like, creative energy going um, is something I definitely want to do. Obviously, I'll carry on working with Ted and Martina, yeah. like hopefully forever, because yeah. like we get along so well and they get me. Um, but yeah, I think because obviously I do want to keep releasing projects, etc. but just being able to write as much as possible with as many people is something I definitely want to do this year now that I've got not a bit of time, but it'll probably be a little while until I release another like whole project. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's quite exciting just to be able to go out and like meeting all these other people and writing with them and like learning from them as well yeah. and hopefully bettering my own production as well. Yeah. So um, there, so there is this thing that you mentioned which I found very very interesting. Um, you you know you um, go into how parts of this get comfortable track where or what where influenced by Alex Isley, Barry White and Olivia Dean, which is quite a very uh, mixed bag. 
<laughs> so like, um, so how, how did you reach for those inspirations for this track? So, um, yeah, it's quite a wide range of like <laughs> people. Um, basically, so the main inspiration for the track was um, this song called Good and Plenty by Alex Isley. Um, and like I said, we originally had this progression, which we then split in two for another song. And then yeah. these first like four bars, I was just like, we, this should be its own song. Um, and we played around with it for a bit and I'd come up with this idea and I was just like, mm, let's come back to it another time. And when we did, when we had this Zoom, I'd recently heard Good and Plenty and I was like, okay. this is it. I just know that the vibe of this track, the simplicity, the drum beat, the like excessive reverb and delay on the vocals. I was like, I love the space that this track has yeah. and the vibe of it and the kind of like neo soul element. This is what I want to bring to get comfortable. So that was like the main reference with Alex Isley. And then I had recently heard um, this track called this, Which Way Is Up by Barry White. And um, he has this kind of like funk guitar like going on in the track. Yeah. And I just love that part of the song. And I was like, I want to bring that to get comfortable because I love funk music. Like that's another kind of big inspiration. Like, I love yeah. James Brown. And yeah, I heard this guitar and I was like, we need to do something like this on Get Comfortable because obviously I wanted it to be like about the space, yeah. but something needed to kind of fill in the gap so it didn't sound too empty. Um, so yeah, we put in this like really rough guitar bit on Logic, but obviously we got real guitar in the end, which yeah, sounds like way yeah. better. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so like that was a, a part of the inspiration like for the guitar sound. And then um, we, well, I think it was actually Ted's idea. Coming out of the bridge, we wanted trumpets. Okay. And um, we both love Olivia Dean and like she uses a lot of horns. And again, like kind of linking back to the funk thing, like keeping the horns in there. And yeah, he suggested using the trumpets and then we listened to I want to say it's Password Change, I think, by her, but I can't remember which track. Um, but yeah, she has this beautiful horn section. So yeah, we were like, right, well, let's do something like that yeah, just yeah. to help the song build a little bit more and like keeping with the whole like live instrumentation as well. Um, and not loads of people use like real horns. So yeah, we got um, um, a friend in to come and do the horns, which was great. So yeah, it was very like different inspirations yeah. uh, like different eras and genres as well but yeah I, I think it was quite cool to kind of mix them and like hear how they sound in this song is yeah. it's quite what I like is all the different you can hear a bit of like soul and a bit of jazz and a bit of some people even be like rock because of the yeah. guitar solo and stuff yeah. but um yeah it's quite nice to bring them all into one song awesome awesome all right let's talk about the video for get comfortable it's done in, done in a very unique way you don't you don't really see the see this kind of like portrait style uh clips being done so um how did you put the video together and like um how does it speak back to the main themes of the song yeah so um me and Alice, the girl who shot it, we wanted, we talked about doing a video for the song, but we weren't like 100% set on it. Um, but we were shooting artwork and press shots. Yeah. Um, and we were just like, why don't we just take a bit of video okay. and see if we can, like, well, she was like, let me see if I can edit it into a video. If you don't like it, don't use it. But like, I'd love to just take some shots and then see how it comes out. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool, let's do that. Cause we'd kind of talked about it anyway. And, um, and the setting was almost perfect because obviously like this track is about that intimacy and just a one-on-one -on -one connection. Um, it was really cool like having just me, not always even talking to the camera, like singing to the camera, yeah. but just having the kind of moments of like, and the coloring, the ver like, um, the reds and the pinks, yeah. like it just felt very like kind of sensual and um, yeah, it, it turned out perfectly because it almost just replicated like you actually having that conversation yeah. and like the intimacy of the setting and 
um, the way it's filmed. And we also, like, I like the portrait style because obviously a lot of people now just on their phones, like not many yeah, people yeah, watch yeah, things, yeah. go on their laptop to watch a video. And obviously you can still watch like the original YouTube style on your phone, yeah. but just having it portrait made it so much more like visually appealing for people to look out if they're just scrolling on their phones yeah. as well. Um, with it taking up the whole screen and kind of like <laughs> capturing, yeah, yeah, catching your attention. So yeah, it was it wasn't like a fully planned thing, and that's why it's more of like a a visual than like a music video, yeah. I'd say. But yeah, it worked out like really well. <laughs> it was really good because I because I really like like the whole style and you know how for me I feel that it fits the song perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, so like. Can you, you know, touch on a bit more, you know, what it was like working with Alice Jane on the visuals? Yeah, it was amazing. I love Alice. She's great. Um, I've known her, gosh, like a year now. I think we did like some shoot over lockdown, like a FaceTime thing, and that's how I properly met her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's great. She just completely is, she's up for anything and like she'll understand exactly the kind of vision that you're after. Um, and yeah, like I say, it was kind of her idea to just say, let's just take some yeah. take some video and just see what we can get out of it. And like, it couldn't have worked any better. Um, but yeah, she's great. We've definitely got more plans for proper like music videos for um, songs coming out in the future. Um, but yeah, yeah, I can't recommend her enough. Like she's really good and she definitely can, she just can do anything that you kind of picture in your head and you just say it and she'll be like, yeah, we can yeah. do that. or let's try this and then you might not think something and she'll think of it and it's like oh it's yeah. just it turns out amazing so yeah yeah she's dope, great dope, dope. all right cool so the get comfortable ep has been out for a week now and you also had a concert you know just a few days ago i think um so like in general what has the reception been for the project and how are you feeling about it yeah it's been great it's been it's crazy because obviously I only started releasing music October last year. So it's been like five months yeah. um, and doing this whole thing independently. And, you know, it's, it's hard, but to see the amount of people that have responded to it and seeing all the people that turned up on, when was it, last week to the yeah. show and the support and just people constantly still like messaging me now being like, oh, I'm just loving the EP or whatever. And telling me they're like sharing it with their friends or their family or like, they'll play it in front of someone and they'll be like, oh, who is this? And like, oh, it's my friend. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's been really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously when you put that much effort into something yeah. and yeah. it's your first like proper project, you're kind of nervous about if people are gonna yeah. like it or not. But yeah, it's been great. And it's definitely um, kind of excited me and motivated me to like keep going and um, for the next releases as well, that hopefully people will enjoy those. So. Definitely, yeah. definitely, awesome. So, how how was the how was the live gig itself like? Um, how are you with going back to going well going going back outside and being able to perform live? You know, how was that feeling? And you know, um, are there plans for more shows? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I I love performing. I I hadn't properly well. It was the first time performing like my own set with all my own songs. Um, I'd obviously done a few things when I was at uni, um, but yeah, it was it was absolutely amazing. Like to just feel that buzz and that energy, and I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. And seeing people, you know, s singing your lyrics back to you, and you're like, this is so crazy. <laughs> like and people who don't know you and they come up to you after the gig like oh i love your music You're like this is mad like it's so crazy um but yeah it was it was amazing and we've definitely got more things lined up i'm doing um a show at the end of april just like a kind of acoustic setting oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing so yeah the plan is just to keep gigging um this year and hopefully do some more shows like and i'd love to do some festivals and stuff yeah. over the summer but just to kind of get my music out there and like that's the best part for me about music anyway is the performing like yeah. as much as I love writing and recording it's being on that stage and like being able to sing those songs in front of people yeah. and I think the energy last week was amazing obviously because it's been so long since people have been like going out and doing these true, things and 
it, yeah, it was it was amazing. I'm super excited to do more. So. Definitely awesome. So um, we have come to kind of our customary final question um, for this series. Um, so it goes like this: for people that are just finding out about you through this conversation and they want to go back and hear more. Mm -hmm. Apart from Get Comfortable, uh, what three songs should they start with and why? Okay, well, it's kind of easy because I've only got four songs. Um, but I would say obviously Up All Night uh, is a great, great track. I really love that song, very upbeat. Like if you want to kind of listen to it anywhere, Up All Night will give you that kind of good like R&B vibes. Um, when Will I Know, obviously, be prepared if you're in the you should be a bit more in a sad mood to listen to that track but um yeah when will i know and um can't let go again like another fun upbeat track um so yeah those would be the three to listen to and i feel like they'll give you a good idea of who i am because i'm all very different but similar at the same time so definitely yeah. definitely thank you so much thank you so for the people where can they find you the socials like the website where can they find you on this big bad web <laughs> um so amethyst music uh with two c's um for instagram facebook and then with three c's for twitter because that was taken <laughs> um but yeah amethyst music it should be like the first thing that comes yeah. up um and yeah Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for, for being me. here. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you.